welcome uh, to another, uh, oops, I'm already screwing up. There we go. All right, hello and welcome. We've got a, another NGS match for everybody tonight. We've got uh, the uh, Duratin's Couch versus Cat Daddies. Um, Nexus Division game between these two teams. Uh, we, uh, we like to do a lot of casting of Duratin's Couch. I have got with me here Opius. How's it going, Opius? Good. Going good. How you doing? Good, good. Um, just to let everybody know, uh, while we're waiting for the teams to get ready here, we've got everybody in the lobby just waiting for them to s push start. Uh, for everybody <clears> to know, uh, map bands were uh, <clears throat> Duratin's Couch Band, Alterec Valley, and Towers of Doom. Cat Daddy's uh, Band, uh, Sky Temple, and Volskaya. And Cat Daddy's also chose first pick. They won the coin flip. So that will be our uh, that will be our those will be the bands um, and the first uh, map that was picked was Dragonshire. So um, so Durton's couch chose to take us to Dragonshire for the for the match here. So um, looking forward to this one. Um, I, uh, I I always like to see Dragonshire. It's one of my favorite maps. It's it's just a it just seems like it's a, a classic. Great. Yeah, it seems like well balanced map too. It's just like one that has, you know, there's a lot going on, a lot of a lot of good things you can do, a lot of different strategies and tactics that you can use to do, you know, different ways of going about it. Globals are obviously powerful on a map like this, so it's um, you know, it's it's interesting to see if any of the teams take stuff like that. Although things like Brightwing uh, are are banned out often, um, you know. So the other thing, you know, solo laners make a big impact on a map like this. If you have a really yeah. strong solo laner, you can like you can almost single handedly win this map with a good solo laner. Uh, so it's um, yeah, it's a it's a good one. Anything you're looking forward to on this map? No, pretty much what you said. I mean, when I think about the old pro league back in the day, this is the map that I would be the most interested in, because as you said, you have to. A team really has to have strong points all the way through, or make up somewhere where they're lacking. And um, I and I love that this map is like that. It's like a, it's a small map really, but it feels like a big map. So it's uh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good match. I'm looking forward to see these t team fights. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, I, I am too. It's gonna be a good one. Um, let me see here as we. Let me. I always like to take a look at the division statistics here and see where these two cat, two cats, two two teams are at. We've got Cat Daddies. Uh, cat Daddies is sitting currently in sixth place uh, with five points. They've won five games and lost nine. Um, and Durton's Couch is currently sitting in third after their most recent win. Uh, they've got 13 points, four dominations. They've got nine games, one and two lost. Uh, those two losses are actually coming in their first. Uh, game of the of the season uh, to I think it was nepotism and corruption is that right I can't remember I think it was nepotism and corruption was the team that they faced uh, first and and lost to yeah that is it so you know interesting to see how the these these games are shaking out um, and and these teams moving on through um, and we'll see uh, how this match goes for both of these teams. Uh, we have, let's see here, everybody's saying they are ready. Um, I'm going to tell them that the casters are ready. Oh, they're they're missing someone. Oh. Not again. Not again. Not again. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we got them in here, and I think we'll be starting this one here pretty soon. All right, good. Yeah. Was good. There we go. Everybody's are in the chat and we should be starting here any second not too, not too many viewers today go tell your friends or your mom or your cousins come in the chat view the stream i'll give them live football update <laughs> yeah oops sorry uh we uh everybody's everybody's uh watching some monday night football maybe i don't know yeah, Josh Allen just threw a five-yard pass for a touchdown. Very nice. Like a beast. He is. I got, like, something on my shirt. I took this, like, this supplement earlier today. 
And like some of it spilled on my shirt, and I think it's just been on there for a while. A little sticky. A little white stuff, so it looks like I'm a cokehead. Mm-hmm. Or you got dandruff. Yeah. Well, I guess you could still get dandruff if you if you're bald, right? <laughs> I think so. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really see it. All right, we got a junk rap band and a Nubrak band. I like both those bands. Um, a Nubrak is definitely interesting because you don't always see, you know, a Nubrak band first unless there's somebody else on the other team who's playing it. So that's what my guess is going to be on that one. And you got your Genji band. Good band to ban out some high quality DPS. Always, always Genji. Yeah. Right? It's like the number one ban against Surge and Couch to get Genji so uh, far. Yeah, I think so. I think so. They definitely like the Who ban would play junk who would play junk rat and Surge and Couch though? I think I don't it, think I've ever seen them play. I think Idioms plays junk rat, but maybe it's just one of those things that they don't wanna play against it, you know. I mean Junkrat is annoying. He can stall a lot on this map. It's you know, mm -hmm. It's right. um, just a right, good, right. good pick. And then the Hogger ban. And there they go with the Dahaka, like I was talking about before, getting those globals because they're really oh. valuable on this map. How do you hope they pick us a single laner, single laner for Dirge and Couch? You know, I, I'm i not too good what's, on, on what's what a, the... What's a classic? What's a classic? Well, a classic would be like Leoric, but I don't know what the no. good, good matchups are. You know, I don't know what a good what the good matchups are on their end. I'm not very Me, good at the solo Misha lane. Having Misha up there. Oh yeah, that'd be a good one. Yeah, that the Blaze. is a classic. The Blaze. That's a that's a a solid one. Wildcard well, plays a lot of it. Yeah, he plays Blaze. I'm surprised people don't ban well. People don't really ban single laner, so do they? They don't. No, they don't really ban a lot of. There's not a lot of off lane bans that happen. Single lane. A ram players. Right. And we got Rhaegar and Johanna, super solid. Yeah, super solid combination. They've got a really good, they've got, you know, on the side of Cat Daddies, they've got their really good solo laner with the global ability. They've got one of the best healers, if not the best healer in the game right now. And Johanna, which is a top tier tank. Um, so they have a, uh, Yeah, they have outstanding, like a S tier core group. Right yeah, exactly. Now they can just plug and play any, yeah, they'll be pretty good. Yeah. Agreed, agreed. And there's a Sylvanas. I'm tell I I think that Duritan's couch is trying to ban out some specific picks because these are very strange picks in my opinion to be banning out. Um, you know, I don't see any real rhyme or reason why they would be banned out. Hogger is probably the only one that wouldn't be a weird ban because Hogger is a very strong solo laner and you know can be pl and a lot of people play Hogger, but Sylvanas and, and Anubarak, I don't know. It's just weird. And a Vala ban. That's a strange one, too. I mean, good character. No no problems with the ban. It's just, uh, it's not what I'm used to seeing, I guess, is what I should say. Not strange, just not what I'm used to seeing. Right. And there's Tracer. And KT. Good combo there. Uh, leaving the tank for last pick. Yanners plays... A lot of tracer, um, you know, we see a lot of that banned out on uh, on the side of um, you know from for people playing against Duritin's couch a lot, banning out that tracer. Kalthos, you know, I I think Kalthos is a strong mage pick for them. Ooh, gray mane and chromy. Yeah, I mean, what do you think right. of cat dad? What do you think of cat daddies? They've got a pretty solid. Pretty solid lineup, in my opinion. Um, that slow uh, chromy half is really dangerous, especially when you're on, you know, eject point objectives like this map has. Yeah. It's really locked down. So it's really interesting to see. Or, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was going to say, or the time lapse, but I don't think that would work for Tracer that well. Right, right. Yeah. That KT is pretty good, though. I like that KT against that uh, Gray main and their whole setup right now at Rigor. Yep. everything that's a really good counter definitely really good uh you know anduin's great into chromie too i mean you can't really do the time lapse with with anduin because he can pull you out of it every time i feel um, like we got the blow up versus the more sustained damage going on here where cat daddy's is more of the blow up 
yeah. get a kill back away. Get a kill back away. Or Keratin's couch is a lot more sustainable damage. Just chip away at them, and then when they're low, let's finish them off. Type of style of team fighting. Yeah, looking forward to it. Here we go into is, game number one. Uh, is there a way to follow your camera on this? Uh, Do I don't. I I'm sure there is, but I don't know what the heart of the button is if somebody in chat can tell us and sorry i'll fix the score here in a second we've got uh on the blue team which is played by duratin's couch we have yawners on the uh yawners on the tracer uh wild card on blaze uh, i'm sorry yeah on blaze i just fizzed on muradin anduin played by goliath and kalthos played by idioms on the side of cat daddies we've got magnetic playing the uh playing the johanna We've got Shoepuff playing Chromie, Rhaegar played by Yuji, Dahaka played by Tay, and Greymane played by Shy Guy. Sounds like. Got a comment here. Looks like somebody's is real ID friends with Yonners. Yep. Lol. Everybody can see his name. His name is John. Pretty generic name. Yeah, it looks like Dirt and Scout just getting pretty worked right now on that damage. They're all kind of low. Back away. Late on the rotation. Taking the safe side all the way, even their tank. Idioms. Might get caught out here. He is in deep in that lane. He's going to run away, but he is not going to get away. I do not think. 20 health. Yep, he's down. Oh, well, I'll try to save. Looks like he's getting cut out. Oh. Good slows. Teams going for their camps now. Look at that Chromie just putting little time traps there for vision. That's, that's so genius. Yeah. Very, well, very good so, use of those time traps. And, okay, good. Uh, just fizz. Disrupting the rotation. That's pretty good. Yeah, Cat Daddy's able to gain control of the shrines, but not for long. Idioms is going to gather it back on bottom again. Nope. Chromie doing a lot of damage. Nice oh. gravity laps onto Johanna. Yeah, that was really good. Basically saved his life. Good stun onto Chromie. Gets the uh, the uh, ult from the from Yonners. Yonners takes a lot of damage though. He's gonna back out. Idioms gets three with his gravity gravity laps. And Durton's couch taking a lot of damage. Yeah, that that healing done. Fire. Yep. Yuhi is uh, really good right now. Yeah, magnetic. Oh, Ooh, whew. gets. Gets her iron skin popped before dying, sitting at about 90 Not health. Ten. Oh my god. Leather health. Oh, Leather wild card. So wild card goes down to the towers. Gets a little aggressive. Pulse bomb goes out on a shy guy. Yana's just doing a little harassing there. Both teams. Still just vying for position here, you know. They've got the uh, the level lead on the side of uh, Cat Daddies. Uh, they're about, about a half a level ahead. A lot of damage being taken by Muradin here. He jumps to safety, though. They're able to gather the shrines on Cat Daddies again, but they're not looking to cap just yet. It's a little early. I just fizzed. Taking some damage. A lot of damage. He's able to get out of it. To your fellow caster, you'll use the number one on your numpad. Um, it works pretty good. Now I'm looking at what you're looking at. Nice. Thank you, spectator. You Twitch fellow Twitch viewer and supporter. Magnetic harassing that Yonners. That's a good idea to get that Tracer. Shy Guy taking a lot of damage. Pulse Bomb goes out, gets him really low, and he's going to be able to escape there with barely any health. Great job by Yuji keeping him alive. 
I just Fizz taking a lot of damage, and now the Dahaka comes in and grabs Tracer to take her down before Goliath is able to save him with the Anduin uh, Leap of Faith. Yep. Tracer got caught. Yep, nice move there by Tay on Dahaka to jump in at the right time and, and secure that kill. Now we've got uh, Cat Daddies capturing the, some camps, getting some advantage with the uh, with the kills that they that they got. And that, is that going to be a big factor on them winning? I mean, they've been winning the engagements for the most part, Cat Daddies, that is. But, like, just that global come in, just to extra boost the final, I think kill is good, where Blaze was just so far away. Can't make that trip to yeah. jump in on the fight. Well, that's what, that's, that's why they first picked him, right? I mean, it's a really good first pick for this map. Yeah. They've already got the... The ult there on the side of Chromie because of her ability to get that early. Tay comes in, but he's a little late on the engage. So they're not able to secure any kill, but he'll just run back up to keep on soaking. And in the meantime, Dirt and Scouch is catching up on XP. So they're, uh, they're pretty much even right now. Both teams going to be hitting level 10 fairly close to each other. But Chromie's got a little bit of advantage right now. In goes... Oh my gosh, Chromie getting really low. The... The bomb goes off. Chromie hits her own time trap. He's got no health and taken down by Murden. Yanners taking a lot of damage. Murden tries to get out, gets pulled back in by Johanna. Nice gravity lapse by Idioms to slow him down, though. That was a good team fight. They, it looked like they finally just made a decision like, let's pick a target and go after it. And they got really well. Yeah. Light bomb goes out. Pulse bomb goes out. Big uh, ancestral on Shy Guy by the by Yuji. Nice save there. Y Shy Guy taking a lot of damage, getting harassed. He's really slow, but I just Fizz is getting really low as well. He's gonna have to back out of there because Chromie's in on the fight now. Big gravity lapse again by Idioms. Tries to put out the damage. Throws down his ult, the Phoenix. Teams are gonna disengage. Like, I get why you would use the ult from Kaladas for the... But I feel like the the Pyroblast might have been a better choice for this. You definitely do a lot of damage to their targets, right? I mean, there's a lot of soft targets on the side of Cat Daddies that they could use it that really Pyroblast. It really just makes... It makes Rhaegar to use We got, a, his got an engage here. Rhaegar's getting really low. They oh, catch right, him out. Right. And there's no way for him to stay alive. Chromie is going to use stasis to stay safe, though, from that pulse bomb. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. It's a good question. If you wow. want to force Rhaegar to use this all, all the time, that way it's always on cooldown. Just do that. Yeah, good tra good trade of uh, cooldowns. Shy Guy goes up top with with uh, Grey Main to double team onto Wildcard to stop that from... Uh, from being capped. Yanner's protecting the middle. And they are able to grab the bottom altar back oh, yeah. on the side of uh, Duritan's couch. There is a huge group of minions up top lane though. So I think they're going to get a lot of value off of them top lane. Big uh, cursed bullet comes out from Shy Guy. Murden, Murden's able to jump away though. Oh, big Dahaka comes in. Nice, nice uh, Captain America shield from Magnetic. And he's going to take a lot of damage, though. He's down to about 200 health, but he's going to get a heal there. And they're going to take out both Anduin and Kael'thas with that engage. Great job by uh, Tay to come in there and secure those kills. Now, what alt? Cat Daddies get that uh, siege camp again. Gonna make the make them clean it up. And they're gonna get their siege camp as well. Wildcard is doing a pretty good job on this. I mean, he's able to capitalize a little bit on this top lane when uh, Tay goes down for the engages. So, a side positive. I just Fizz gets hit with the uh, curse bullet again. They're really trying to burn him down there. I just Fizz taking a lot of damage. 
and the uh, the chromey slow what is that temp slowing sands is uh, really annoying. You know, it's it's quite an annoying thing to deal with when you have to deal it's with really chromey. Effective. Yeah. Effective. Fizz going in, slowing sands on him again. Yawners taking a lot of damage. The light bomb goes out, and he recalls back to get the light bomb. What a what a play. Not able to do much damage though. He's gonna have to back out. I just fizz getting harassed here. And he's gonna be able to get out, at least for now. That slowing sands is really cutting him down. And Goliath is out of heals right now. The ancestral goes off onto Johanna to keep him alive. And I just fizz is gonna be the only casualty on that one. And they're fighting up top. They're fighting up top for control of this other Alter wildcard doing his best to to keep his team little, in this right now. A little, little stalemate. Yeah. Oh, and they're both dodging each other's abilities too. Great, great play by both these solo laners. Camps are being picked up here on the side of uh, Duritan's couch. All the while, we've got Cat Daddies getting that bottom camp, and they're gonna push and threaten this bottom tower to be the first tower of the game to be taken down. Yeah, that is capitalizes on just a few seconds of time. That, yeah. That they have. Oh, look at that. Nice, nice one there by Chromie. Gets the uh, the uh, little time trap in there. And they're able to put out a lot of damage onto Muradin. Yeah, I agree. They're doing a great job capitalizing on whatever advantage they have. And it looks like Cat Daddy's is going to be able to get this. A stall comes out from Goliath, but it's not going to be enough. Goliath might even pay his life. Nope, he's going to be able to get away. Nice job by Muradin intervening there. Muradin taking a ton of damage, though. Level 16, we've got our first, uh, first Dragon Knight picked up on the side of Cat Daddy's. I just fizz jumping into the back line. Yonner's coming in. The they get the kill before the light bomb even goes off. Great job there by uh, Duritan's catch to secure a kill. I just fizz jumping in again. They're going to try to harass us as much as possible. Magnetic taking a ton of damage, getting really low. Yonner's diving in to try to get the kill, but he's going to tap the well and going to get out of there. I just fizz still harassing. Nice job by Kalthos securing that kill. And again, Kalthos gets two kills on Johanna and Greymane. Wow, what a fight. What a combat. Yeah. Get three kills now. It. I think uh, Cat Daddy's definitely put Durkin's couch in the ropes. And they, they they just made a decision to fight back and just go for it. Yeah, great, great counterattack here. Idioms with a really big oh, gravity wow. lapse. And the, and the pulse bomb didn't even go off. And uh, they already secured the kill. The gravity lapses by Idioms have been uh, pretty good. <laughs> And that's going to be a hard stagger for Cat Daddies to deal with here. They're going to have to do a lot of cleanup mm -hmm. right now. Though the bottom lane is pushing out pretty hard here. Wildcard's going to go and clean it up. While uh, the rest of Duritan's couch pushes the bottom lane as best they can here. We've got Tay cleaning up the top lane here. Trying to get rid of all these minions up top that are pushing in. But right now, uh, I mean, still a really close game. Both teams are pretty much even on talents. Uh, the... Uh, Cat Daddy's is only a half a level down, or no, about a full level down. But they can catch up if they can, if they can get a little bit closer before uh, level 20. It won't be long the that's 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 what they're going to be working towards right now. We've got Duritan's couch coming in for a sneaky invade. They jump on to Chromie here. She's in stasis for a while. Going to try to stay alive. The silence goes out onto uh, the Anduin. Big blow up onto Chromie. A lot of fighting going on here. We've got Yonner's taking a ton of damage. Big stun by Wildcard onto three members. Big gravity lapse. And we've got a... Oh, bunker goes down. Yuchi getting really low. And the rest of Cat Daddy's makes it out barely. They're just separated there a little too much. And they got caught up in it. Yeah, at this level, you got a trouble is five. Yeah. Idioms get saved. Shy Guy taking a lot of damage. Yonners backs out and Fizz secures the kill on to uh, Greymane. That uh, kill toss level 16 is yeah. giving them back. Is getting them back in the fight. That's for 
It's a big one. Let's see what the damage is looking like. Tracer lead in the charge with the damage right now with 49k. Gray Man at 48k though, so you know, Kalthos at 45. There, there's a lot of Chromie at 43. It's all pretty even. I mean, it's been a pretty even match so far. Dragon Knight secured. Second Dragon Knight of the game secured here by uh, Dirt and Scouch. Let's see if Cat Daddies can make a turnaround on this the same way that uh, Dirt and Scouch did. A lot of siege damage Ooh. going out. I think this is uh, this one's definitely going to go down. Cat Daddies do not have level 20, which is a big disadvantage for them right now. They're playing it as safe as they possibly can to avoid getting any more deaths right now. They've got a full five members, so that's good. Chromie Pop Stasis to stay uh, away from being kicked. A lot of poke damage coming out from Chromie here. This is where Chromie excels. So, Duratin's Couch going down bottom. Not ready to really fight for the win there. The stun missed by Wildcard gets pulled in, taking a lot of damage. Slowing Sands really is a big problem, you know. It's a it slows him down quite a bit here. It's tough. And they're able to stay alive. Cat Daddy's doing a great job fending off that that uh, Dragonite there. Fizz taking a lot of damage for that uh, globe right there. He's gonna back out. Cat Daddy's almost level 20. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see once they hit level 20 if they're able to re-engage and maybe win a, a team fight here. Fizz jumps in over the wall onto the Chromie. Four-man light bomb blows them up. And only one dead so far, but Magnetic and Yuji get stunned. Fizz jumps in on top of them. Going to harass this Rhaegar. Doing a lot of damage to Yuji. And they're going to take him out. Big stun by Wildcard to finish off Johanna. And Shy Guy is uh, probably going to be the final one to... Or not the final one, but... Oh, nope. He's running around doing everything he can. Shy, Shy Guy he's dodging, dodging everything. Dodging. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's jumping around like crazy. Doing a good job avoiding everything. Staying alive for his team. Comes away with 300 health. And Tay's going to take some damage. Wow. Yeah, really impressed. And that's going to be I thought, GG's. I thought that Cat Daddies was going to just sweep Urgent's couch. I don't know. They were winning all the engagements or they had full control of the map. Uh, up until what, around 17, level 17. Wow. Uh, yeah, around. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm pretty shocked. Pretty shocked right now. Yeah, it was a uh, very good game. Very close. Um, and, uh, and then, like you said, it just kind of. Well, in the first half of the game. Dirt and Scouch was getting bullied. They were, they, you know, and, and until that first Dragonite, and they made the push after that Dragonite was secured mm -hmm. by uh, by Cat Daddies, and then they weren't, and and they got jumped on, um, and got a kill, and then ever since then, those those Merton Merton uh, leaping in dwarf tossing with light bomb onto Chromie was just too much for them to handle. Yeah, it was. Well, they did better when they knew the engagement was coming. When they didn't know the engagement when they seem not to perform as good right uh it's very interesting very interesting i think you got some comments in the chat yeah go ahead and read them off i'm sorry i actually don't have my chat up right now so oh what a caster i know 10 out of 10 for casting what are they saying in there uh, it looks like somebody's spamming. Hey, I want to offer a promotion channel. A promotion of your channel. Viewers, followers, chat, chatbot. Go ahead, deny that. Yeah, you can just ban that one. All right, let's see what we got here. See what the next game is. Let's see here. They're in a lobby again. Let's see where we're, they're taking us next. We're going to Infernal Shrines next. One of my favorite maps. This nice. Is a, These are good map. Picks. Yeah, really good map picks we got going on here. So let's see. Uh, first pick is going to Team 2, which is Cat Daddy. So uh, Cat Daddy's chose first pick. Um, and so that would be a map pick from the uh, Duratin's Couch for Infernal Shrines.
let's see what happens on this one. You think any bans will come out on the side of uh, of either team that they don't want to deal with going into this game? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that I, I, I think that even though Durgeon's Couch won that game, I don't think they even though they kind of big brother them at the end, I don't think it was enough for them to really scare cat daddies into a, a ban. Uh, I think that yeah. cat daddies just needs to make some adjustments on how they take agents. I think they know what to expect on the order of how, how uh dirt and scout uh, does team fights. And uh, I think they can make those adjustments. To win. I completely agree. Actually. I don't think there's going to be any, you know any specific ban there's there's nothing in there that i saw that was that would have scared me if i was either of those teams right they it's like you right. said they they need to make cat daddies maybe need to make some minor adjustments for their team fights but other than that both teams played very well in that last match it was very close you know it was just a couple of key plays that really swung the you know swung it the the direction of duratin's couch and i think it'll be a another close match that we've got going on here so yep yeah Hopefully we get to see the three matches. That'd be nice. <laughs> I'd like to see that too. Uh, we've got uh, everybody saying ready. Let's see. Oh, we got one person doing a little bathroom break. And then we'll get jumped into the match here. Yeah, so um, yeah, it'll, it'll definitely be interesting. See if we, um, you know, I, I, I think teams will probably change some things up um for for this matchup and see how they you know what they do to correct or not to correct uh what they do to change up their strategies or what their strategies are that are different for this map versus the other map this map is definitely completely different in terms of the way that you approach it because the objective is singularly focused on one particular area not spread across three different lanes of the map so it'll be interesting to see how they adjust their drafts to go into this one. I think that we'll see a little bit more team focus uh, on this on this one and less of the, um, uh, you know, less globals maybe on this one uh, than in the previous map. Uh, I guess we only had one global, but, um, you know, uh, I, I don't usually expect to see too many of those. Get if the there was a ban, maybe, that, but they still won, though. Uh, the Hako is on... On yeah. Cat Daddy. So yeah, I guess it didn't really matter. Yeah. Um, and we do see, you know, the uh, the junk rat ban again. Um, so it's obviously something they don't want to deal with. And uh, I mean, junk rat is just a great character overall. Um, excels at so many different maps, and this one is is definitely, you know, no surprise. And there's the Anubarak ban again. Uh, like I said before, I think that's a targeted ban. If I were to guess, it's just my only. That's that's my assumption on that. Um. Unless somebody tells me tells me that I'm wrong. See if they ban the Genji out again. Maybe the Tracer. See which one they'd rather fight against here. Ban the Lucio. Interesting. So they're going to take Lucio off the map. I can't say that I've ever seen Goliath play Lucio. Um... I've only watched a couple of their games, but I'm pretty sure I've never seen him play Lucio. I'm not saying that he can't play Lucio, just saying that I haven't seen it. So that will be, uh, that's an interesting ban. Composition ban. And there's the Hogger ban. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking both of those are targeted bans to specific players. Yuji going straight with the Anduin pick. Um... Anduin's, Anduin's a solid healer, you know, just a uh, lot of good, a lot of good um, things that Anduin can offer the team. So no, su no surprise for a, a good pick there. Gives them flexibility in, later on in the draft to, to kind of react to how uh, Durton, what Durton's couch picks. Blaze and Brightwings. There's a global right wrong. there. Can't go wrong with Brightwings. Brightwings, so I mean, Brightwing could... And Brightwing and Anduin are like Taylor. Taylor's radar as well. But yeah, it's it's a strong, strong healer. 
Yeah, and uh, you know the Blaze played by Wild Card was really solid last round. Multiple, you know, multiple multiple character stuns. Hanzo and Johanna again. The Johanna play last time by Magnetic was really good too. A um, lot of great Avenger shields popped out that were really well placed. Um, you know, so nice to see them stick with some of their. Uh, What's the benefit of having Hanzo on this? Yeah, I don't know that there's any particular benefit to Hanzo. He's just an overall strong character. Good poke damage. Um, you know, really good. Uh, really good. Uh, uh, or a decent wave clear. Not really good, but decent wave clear. And there's that Selvanus ban again. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything in particular, you know, that's that makes him great on this map. But he's certainly a, a solid character. I don't know why they ban it, Savannah. Is that's Cat right. Daddy is like cheese with Savannah. That's what I'm telling you, man. You the, all three of those bands, I think, are targeted bans. And then we've got a false dead. It's like, it's like banning Chogol or something. Yeah, I mean, it's just banning characters that they think that they're they're you know, comfortable on, right? Just getting rid of those comfortable characters for cat daddies. You know, some of these teams in, in NGS really do a lot of homework to figure out what the other team is good at or they have relationships with these people and they know what they play in their off hours and, and practice. So, you know, it's... Uh... And there's the Kael'thas and Kerrigan pulled out by Yonners. Um, yeah, the, the Kael'thas um, was really strong last round i thought um multiple gravity mm -hmm. lapses that worked out really well we'll see how uh Giannis is able to do on the kerrigan um you know i think we saw him play it oh kira and sonia what a combination i have never seen something like that before i am really excited i love kira such a such a cool hero in my opinion um and uh it'll be great to see how they're able you know how they're able to pull this together i could see some really good combos with kira and sonia together uh, they've got a lot of stuns a lot of you know a lot of disruption and with hanzo i mean you're talking about light bomb the hanzo dra is it dragon arrow kira's got her alt stun and then Sonya's got Leap. I mean, they've got a lot going on, not to mention Avenger Shield. So, yeah, they, they've got a lot of disruption and, and uh, CC going on on the side of Cat Daddies. I, I like what they got going on here. And then uh, Tyrael, great pick up there on the side of Durton's couch. We'll see if they go with Judgment or uh, Sanctification for the ultimate there. Which team are you liking, Opius? I like Cat Daddies' team. It's very interesting. Um, we'll see. Happen. Um pretty beefy. I, I think maybe even too beefy for Kerrigan. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah, definitely. I did uh, they pick Johanna before Kerrigan was big? Yeah. Uh-huh. And they still pick Kerrigan into Johanna? That is insane. Yeah, we'll see how it pans out for him. All right, on the side, uh, game number two, Durton's Couch up 1-0. We've got Wildcard playing Blaze, Tyrael played by I Just Fizz, Yonners playing Kerrigan, Goliath on Brightwing, and Idioms on KT. On the right side, on the red team, we've got Cat Daddies. We've got Kira played by Shoepuff, Anduin played by Yuji, uh, Johanna played by Magnetic, Tay on Sonya, and Shy Guy playing Hanzo. I think we're going to see it. A game. I hope we see a game three. I have never seen a comp that uh, you know this. Uh, you know I've never seen you know Kira I, or I don't see play a Kira that often. So it's really exciting to see that here. Um, I'm excited to see how this comp works out for Cat Daddies because uh, it's yeah. just a, it's a cool comp. Yana's yeah. getting harassed plus, already. Plus Yana selects with Kara again. Prove me wrong. Let's see how it goes. Hashtag prove me wrong gets the stun mm -hmm. out. Putting the damage out onto Kerrigan. He gets rooted there by Yuji. Both teams not really doing a whole lot to each other there. Just going to start to rotate. Shoepuff waiting in the corner. Goliath sniffs it out, though. The wave clear right now on the side of Cat Daddies is really good, which is 
I, you know, I guess they're kind of just waiting to trade here, but you know, both teams have pretty good wave clear, so it's, uh, it's yeah. interesting. Both teams going for their camps right now. Johanna trying to do a little disruption here. Looks like maybe they're giving up theirs and they're gonna. Nope. Okay. Cat Daddy's just sticking uh, on their yeah, camp. Yeah, Shy Guy stopped. They almost like. I think they were trying to make a decision if they want to invade or not. Yeah. Tay came down for that as well, so we'll see. I'm having a hard time sitting down right now. I might need to stand up. Here. Oh, sounds good. Well, you're not on camera, so no, nobody can tell. <laughs> All right, good. Tay. Oh, wildcard misses the stun there. Throws down the oil spill. Good old classic solo lane battle going on right now. Stun comes out from wildcard onto Sonya. Both, both of these guys are such solo laners. They are, yeah. Both of them. On the last game, they were both really solid with their solo lane play. You know, I mean, yeah. it's uh, really good to watch two solo laners that are really good go against each other. It's like watching a fancy match, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like, who's winning? I don't know, but they're hitting each other. Yep. Oh, man. Durton's couch moving over to get their hard camp here, their bruiser camp. Do you cap the camp right away or do you wait? I think in an ideal world, you probably wait, right, until uh, until it's uh, the shrine has popped. So you're making, you know, teams decide, but... See the... I feel like they're just going to wipe that camp out and then they'll probably grab their hard camp. Yeah, Cat Daddies go down and capture the bottom camp, which I think is a, a great idea there. They are forfeiting some, you know, starting the shrine early. So we'll see if they're able to go up there and, and clear it out. Wildcard is going to stick down below and, and, you know, clear this camp up. So Kerrigan is great at clearing out that uh, that shrine. But uh, they're at a 5v, 5v4 disadvantage right now. So Duraton Scout is going to back out. Backed out, they're resetting. There's a talents for anybody that's interested. Dirt and Scout still at a disadvantage, but they're moving in to get a couple more uh, kills. Shoe Puff goes in onto the Kerrigan, or onto the uh, KT, I mean. Getting really low, though. Shoe Puff taking a lot of damage, but gets some heals from uh, Yuji. Tay going against. Uh, Material and Kerrigan and Magnetic is going to disrupt and walk away as well. Both or all the characters on the side of uh, D Cat Daddy's taking a lot of damage. Going to have to reset, hit the healing fountain and come back. Idioms took the mana at it. I, I feel like Conviction, I feel like this map is like the best map. For yeah, but only... Only uh, crazy people like you take convection. It's just not. It's but that's not what I'm saying though. I'm saying that this map is the best. Map. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you have the objective, you kill minions, plus everybody gathers up. It's the easiest map to get it, and it's useful all out map, both on on the players and the NPC. Brightwing coming down to help out Wild Card. Both teams doing pretty good here. Not a lot of action, really, that has gone on just yet. Both teams really kind of playing to 10, it seems like, for right now. And uh, they're fairly close to each other. Maybe a half a level down on the side of uh, Cat Daddies in terms of levels. Kerrigan definitely has a little bit more of that early game advantage, too. So, you know, seeing that, maybe that play a factor and cat daddies now the uh Durton's couch actually almost a full level ahead here about to hit level 10 Durton or cat daddy's gonna have to be a little careful on how they engage and magnetic just walks straight into it gets polymorphed pops the unstoppable kerrigan misses the uh pull and stun classic yawners root comes out from yuji and Duraton's couch pushing down this uh, this fort with their level 10 advantage.
Ultralisk, Bunker. We got the Sanctification from Tyrael. Blink Heal on the uh, Chromie. Or Chromie. On the uh, uh, Brightwing. And Phoenix on KT. Tay secures that uh, bottom camp secretly there. Level 10 acquired by Cat Daddies. And they're going to look for an engage it looks like here. Shoot buff goes in on that Tyrael. Brightwing coming in. Light Bomb goes out onto Idioms. And he gets taken down really low. Finally going to go down. Sanctification comes out. And we're going to see uh, Kerrigan jump in. Get saved by the Anduin. And uh, Shoe Puff still trying to get some damage in there. The stun goes out onto the Kira. Stun. Nope. Not going to be able to secure another kill there. One for one trade from both teams. Nice little scrap they had there. I feel like Cat Daddies could have disengaged. And that would have saved them the life. I don't understand why they st stuck around there. Then. Yeah. Maybe they'll they need to disengage, reset for a moment, and come back. They won the fight. Maybe they'll reset. watch this back and see the same thing you did there. Because I agree. I mean, they certainly, they certainly had the, they got the kill that they wanted on the KT. They could have decided to disengage at that time, but they stuck around. And look, I, uh, this is exactly what I was talking about. They got unrelenting strikes. That's a stun. Light bomb is a stun. Falling sword is a stun. Although avenging, Avenger shield is too. They got Leap and Dragon Arrow. I love that combination. Just such a fun... Oh, Dragon Arrow goes out. Misses Kerrigan, though. They're not going to be happy with that. Leap goes out. Shoe Puff jumping onto him. Yonner's getting really low. The stun comes out, and they finally get Yonner as he gets taken out. Big stun comes out from Kerrigan. Shoe Puff gets saved by Anduin. And they're going to disengage just as you wanted them to in the last yeah. fight after getting that kill. Yeah, they're all low. They need a reset. That was a good fight, good engagement, good yeah. plan. Took out the honors. Easy kill. Easy kill. I thought I saw him use light bomb. They got light bomb up already. I don't know. Maybe I was imagining that. Gotta stop taking Adderall, my friend. Yeah. Yonners is back in the fight. And right now, fairly even on uh, on minions. Oh, nope, not anymore. Big jump there on the side of... Uh, they do have level 13 advantage on the side of Durton's couch, though. So now we see level 13 by Cat Daddies, and they're going to jump in the fight and try to make an engage out of this and get some minions for themselves. Big stun goes out on a Brightwing, but he's really too far away. The leap comes out from Johanna and from the... Sonya, lots of damage. I can't even tell what's going on. Ultralisk gets popped. Tay is getting really low. Idioms, Brightwing finally takes him out, and Magnetic is going to be done too. Shoe Puff still trying to get some damage done, but I think his days are numbered. And Kira goes down. It was a valiant effort. I liked the idea that, the, you know, they tried to execute the combo they wanted. They got the dragon arrow. They got the leap. They got the falling sword. It just didn't, like, materialize into something that they wanted. Um, did the light bomb... Not, it, like, they, they, got, they got saved by sanctification. Yeah. So I and, sure. and, and that's hard. Like, yeah, you need them in the group to stun them as a group, but it also benefits them because it's... So as Tyrael is up and running, he can get that sink off and basically undo everything that you're doing. Yeah. So timing out, timing out, they do it right back from each other. So maybe bait it a little bit better, right? There it is. There we go. There we go. Trying it again. Get the sun. There's the light bomb this time. Yonners gets hit by the light bomb. Just not enough damage out there to really complete the, the setup. But they got the combo in that they were looking for, I think. That was a pr pretty well done there. Yeah, if they could bake that sink out, get that over with, then they could definitely use the rest of their stuns to win these fights. Who's talking about scientists? What are you guys talking about in chat? Level six, level 16 on the side of Duritin's couch. Got a two-level advantage. They're about a level and a half advantage going on right now. 
Cat Daddies is going to want to catch up before they re-engage again. But they've been doing a good job waiting for those, you know, waiting for those times and not engaging too early. Yep. That's for sure. They do not have Blaze with them right now, but... Dirt and Scout think, just got back out. I think they're out. confident that they're not going to get because the level difference, the talent difference. Yeah. I mean, look at them. They're timid. Just even being in their presence. Pull by Yonners. On to the Johanna. Not going to really get too much out of that. Just harassing this uh, tower or keep wall right now. Getting anything they can. The next objective is going to be on the bottom. So um, doing a little prep work there on the side of Duraton's couch to get that lane ready to go. And right now, Cat Daddies just needs to get 16. Um, that's their top priority. Try to get that level 16 so that they can actually engage in a fight here with Duraton's Couch. Duraton's Couch going to take the Bruiser Camp on the side of Cat Daddies. Cat Daddies does have level 16 now, so they're ready for a fight if they can get they're one. Force fight. Yeah, they want to fight. Yeah, they're they want to get a fight. It's not a bad idea. Hanzo is not with him at this time, though. He's a little bit behind. He so. doesn't need to be with his ult. That's true. He can shoot it across the map, and Duraton's couch is backing away. They don't... They're happy with their lead right now. They've got that top camp pu pushing in on the uh, on the keep wall, along with some catapults, so... A little bit late, wildcard. You almost had him. Watch this back on the replay. <laughs> Both teams will be at even talent tiers. Um, so, you know, they'll be able to, you know, they'll be able to engage this fight. Uh, Sonya is a little bit behind, so I think they're just going to poke a little bit from Cat Daddies for the time being. Sonya is now here. And uh, you can tell that Dirtson's Couch is very aware of the, of the stun potential that they have. And, you know, to not get mixed up in this if they can avoid it. Both teams just trying to pick apart some of these. Light bomb goes out. Goes down. What was this is a. I don't know. It's very weird, but Anduin gets blown up. Uh, and lots of damage going out. It's hard to follow all these mini fights that are going on right here, but Sonya's going to be taken down too. Very. Yeah, very strange engage. I don't know if, if you pop the light bomb and Wait, then Johan. If Johanna goes up. With the with the with the falling sword and then comes down, does it wait to go off? I don't know. Maybe somebody in chat knows the answer to that question. Sometimes there's some weird things that happen with the interactions like that, but uh, it definitely didn't happen that time. Sonya, yeah, when I take butcher and use his damage ult, that happened when Stitches ate me last night actually when I played. So it could be something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's right, I play Butcher. <laughs> QQ's in the chat. Level 20 on the side of Duraton's couch. They're threatening the core right now. All members are up for... Um, there it is. Oh, oh there you go. go. There you go. That's what they were looking to do. I see it. Yeah. Okay. Lots of damage going out. They do take down KT. Yonners is able to get the or the uh, Anduin out, but Yonners goes down. And I just fizz taking a lot of damage, pops the uh, and set or um, sanctification and tries to get out of there. Still really low, but shy guy's doing a lot of damage. Shoe puff jumps on to Goliath and doing a lot of damage to this Brightwing, and he's gonna go down as well. They get four kills on the side of uh, and probably gonna get a fifth. Oh, wild card drags him into the boss. What a play! The stun. And the dodges. He yep. is dodging. He's just dodging everywhere. And they get the full five kills there on the side of Cat Daddies. 
and they answered the question that I had just previously. That was very well executed. I saw what they were trying to do with that falling sword. What a sneaky way to use light bomb. Wild well, card did an amazing job because it had the shield plus 100% of the core, and he got it just because he was distracting them. Got it down to 56%. That's impressive. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. That you know, to me, you you only see that in like you know silver play right there, where you, you, <laughs> players get distracted by you know the magic hand or like, hey, look here. And right. It, that, that was awesome. Yeah, very well done. Um, I like the light bomb falling sword though. That's a very interesting combination that they've got going on there. They did not expect them to be there though. Yonder's taking a lot of damage. All the stuns going out and the Hanzo arrow misses, but it doesn't matter because he's able to jump back into the fight and they get two kills there. Great job done by Cat Daddies to get two kills quickly, staggering some players there on the side of Duritin's couch. Another silver play right there, not checking the bush. <laughs> Yeah, what is that level uh, play of the game? Yeah, play of the game by Hanzo. He can yeah. jump out wherever his arrow's at. Unfortunately, it didn't connect. If it did connect, it would have been pretty sweet. But uh, it was very close. It kind of went through the goalposts on that one. And Cat Daddy's going to threaten this... Uh, this bruiser camp, they're uh, they're making themselves a comeback right now. They do have the level, you know, they're they're, they're even on kills, they're even on talents, um, they're even on levels. Really, the big problem for them is they've got a lot of uh, they've got a lot of uh, their towers and keeps down right now. So they're trying to make up for it with these staggered kills that they have. Wild card coming in. The whole team from Duritin's couch coming in. Yonners lands a pull. Gets onto the Kira. They pop the falling sword. Unstoppable is on magnetic. There we go. We've got the light bomb. It only hits one target. Shoepuff jumps in along with Sonya. Taking a lot of damage. Sanctification comes out. And Tay's going to be in trouble. Gets pulled by Anduin. And Yuji is going to be the victim for saving his friend. Shoe Puff just unable to get his ultimate off because they keep disrupting him every time he tries to do it. Falling Sword comes out again and they're able to take out Yonners. And Idioms is going to take a lot of damage here and Goliath is now in trouble because he blink healed to his friend there but he's going to be able to blink out again. Shy Guy jumping over the walls there pulling out the Hanzo moves. And... Cat Daddies comes out on top again on that fight, just winning these post-level yeah. 20 fights every time since they hit level 20. Um, My biggest criticism in the beginning of the match of taking that break and then re-engaging, they just proved me wrong because they just did that right there and won that engagement. Yeah, they do have they do have the level 20 talent on um, on uh, Johanna, the Heaven's Fury, where you're able to reduce the the cooldown of falling sword and he was able to pop falling sword twice in that engage in the in those two engagements which was huge for them so you know pretty interesting there they're gonna back oh, out yeah, here yeah killer <laughs> deadly combo they're able to you know they're able to uh get in there a little bit of harassment try to get a kill there but uh they're still going to be able to get in there and get this, just secure just this. Stall tactic. That's a really good stall tactic. Definitely give a chance for their whole team to be up to defend this Arcane Punisher. Arcane Punisher. They are going to leave this catapult up here. They're not going to clear that mid lane. It might come back to haunt them. We'll see how it works out. All ults are up for both teams. We'll see what they're able to do here. Light Bomb comes out. It misses. Big. Oh, my gosh. That Hanzo Dragon Arrow just cannot connect this game. So they're going to back out. They are able to get a, a fourth, though, which is great. I think they're going to have to back out, though, because they got to clear some of these lanes that are building up. Yeah. They're going to get this other top four right now. Almost. It's got 500 health on it. Oops, sorry. 
Shoe Puff in a lot of trouble here. Kerrigan comes in, gets the pull and the stun. Shoe Puff making some plays, spins around and hits Kerrigan, heals up a little bit. They're going to get the big stun out from the Falling Sword. And Shoe Puff is going to try to run away, but Wild Card stuns him with the jet Wild propulsion. Wild Card zoned out. Zoned out Cat Daddy's team so well on that engagement. And it looks like they're going to go for the end. Oh, what a play. The, it comes out just in time. They do get the light bomb onto them, and they're going to get the falling sword. So they're going to do a lot of damage, but it's not going to be enough. GG's. I like that play. Yeah. Good decision. Good call there. One player down, and they just go for the, they go for the jugular. High-level play. Went from silver to diamond that quick. <laughs> Great job by both teams. That was a very exciting matchup. Um, you know, interestingly, I mean, uh, Cat Daddy's actually got more kills. Um, you know, they, they were doing a lot of things right. It just, you know, the the counter punches that came out from uh, Duratin's couch was just too much, I think. So uh, great job by both teams. Really, really exciting matchup. Um, you know, but GG's to Duratin's couch for the domination there. Um, so you invite I'll, one of them to our Discord? Uh, yeah, let me see if – or uh, we should probably go into NGS Discord just to – let's see here. Uh, lobby 2. I'm your huckleberry. Thanks for the follow. There's Goliath. Howdy, howdy. Hey, how's it going? Oh, pretty good. How are you? I'm doing good, thanks. Uh, GG's, really well played. Uh, how how was uh, how did you feel going into those matches or coming out of those matches? Um, they were both uh, seemed pretty close from what we could tell, and um, at least in the first match, you guys were getting hit pretty hard and then made a comeback there around level 16. So, uh, yeah. What are your, what are your thoughts on the matches? Uh, yeah, the match is definitely very good, very competitive. We, um, we have had uh, shoe puff on our team before. Shout out to shoe puff, uh, on, uh, dirt hands couch. So we're a little familiar with how he plays and kind of his hero roster. But what I didn't expect was him to be on DPS this season. And that really threw me for a loop. So, Kind of had to change up the whole strategy on how to fight him, but um, yeah, game one was uh was very close, but uh, we kind of bided our time and kind of had a good good inkling of when we'd be strongest compared to them, and uh, I think we capitalized on it. What does Shoe Puff usually play? I usually played off lane for us, anyways. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So the bands that you guys had, my my bet was those are targeted bands because they were not not meta picks at least you know for the most part it, it, am i correct in thinking that are you able to divulge that information where they target bands uh i think hogger is a fairly meta that's band true that's true yeah um the anubarak was yeah like we, we may or may not ban anubarak it, like it, it, it's it's kind of tough we we don't like the fighting the tanks but we'll we'll ban it um, but we know that one of their players uh, for sure really likes Anubrak, so it's kind of it's kind of a cinch on the target ban there. Um, not not really too much argument about it. Actually, there was a lot of humming and, and hawing about that or Johanna for bans, but uh, <laughs> I swayed the team one way into the Anubrak ban. So. Uh, and what about the uh, Sylvanas ban? Um, I was told that's something that Shoe Puff plays. I don't actually know for sure. Gotcha. Um, but, uh, I mean, she's a very good, flexible hero. So, mm -hmm. like, I mean, it's just kind of a safe ban, I feel, in pretty much any situation. Well, especially the maps that you guys play to. That's a De really good ban. Definitely, yeah. It just snowballed completely out of control as soon as we had one one down. And then uh, for um, uh, for the map map number two on Infernal Shrines, I their, their uh, 
their comp was very interesting. And I could see right from the start at least what I thought that they were going to do, and they did end up doing it with the multiple stuns that they were able to line up together. Um, what were you guys' thoughts on that? Were you talking about that before the game? Did you expect a comp like that? You know, Walk us through what you guys were dealing with before you got into the game and during the game with that. Yeah, we kind of saw the Anduin and thought they were going to try and kind of ran back what we did. We didn't really execute the whole light bomb thing very well in game one, but we kind of felt like they have played Genji before, you know, kind of the Shimada brother dream. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll run it at us with the Genji and doing when they picked the Anduin very early, we mm -hmm. kind of thought the light bomb combo was coming and we were right in some ways, I guess. <laughs> um, so I don't have any regrets breaking that bright wing really early, but, um, uh, yeah, we, we kind of had a feeling that they're going to be super aggro, especially when they banned the Lucio. I think they, I think it was a big tell that the, they were looking to get rid of some mass cleansing. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yep. Well, I, I was personally impressed by your guys' first map because you guys were essentially getting your ass kicked left and right on those team engagements. And then you guys flipped a switch and became super aggressive and start winning these uh, team fights and um, and really turn that around. What what? How was explain that to me? How, what was that process like? Well, initially we kind of figured our comp does quite strong at seven. Uh, Murden gets a lot of damage on his kit, and uh, uh, Tracer gets her first damage talent at level seven. So we're just like, you know what? This level seven is kind of it. But then that kind of didn't work, and then we kind of figured out that. Their bot anchor, Chromie, is better than our bot anchor, Kael'thas, at just standing still and not really giving a shit what anybody else is doing. So uh, uh -huh. so we kind of said, all right, we got to start running around the map a little bit and making, like, making... Because what kept on happening is the Dahaka burrow would happen, and that really mess, messed us up. Mm. So we kind of figured if we run around the map a little more, the... Uh, the clear cut dig time isn't going to be, isn't going to be there for that to Haka. So he might not be there in time and we might uh, get a few opportune picks. And uh, that, that is almost exactly what happened. We pushed off lane a little bit and it kind of all fell apart for him. Yeah, it really did. You guys really caught him off guard. It seemed like an engagement. I was talking when I was talking to holiday during the match is when it was playing engagements, like it was obvious, right? You guys were fighting they won those engagements every time. Mm -hmm. But whenever you guys surprised them and everything, they just didn't know how to react. It seemed like they, they just couldn't get off what they what they had planned out. And uh, it was really impressive because you guys wore down until that level 16, level, seven, level 17, you, and then you guys turned around. Really impressed me. Good job. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, the, uh, you know, you, you mentioned the combo, you know, that you guys, the, the light bomb combo. You definitely, you definitely didn't hit it until about, you know, that level 17 marker. And if you remember, at the at the very end, uh, you guys got a beautiful dwarf toss light bomb four mm. four man combo. So, it when it counted at level 20, you guys secured it. So very well done. Hey, 20s when it when it usually counts. So I'll yeah, <laughs> right, definitely. Um, any any shout outs? Any any last words? Anything you'd like to say to the to the crowd? Uh, yeah, thank you very much for uh, Dirtan's coach. Um, you know, all, always good guys to play with. Um, thank you too for casting us yet again. You guys are excellent casters. We're super happy happy to have you cast us consistently. Love to see you more. Um, and yeah, shout out to uh, Cat Daddies for putting on a great game and um, definitely making us have to think about what we're doing instead of just running it down. So yeah, great games all around. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Goliath. We enjoy it. It's fun to cast the games and looking forward to more in the future. You guys have a good week and uh, thanks again. GG's. You bet. Thank you. Thanks, Doc. Thanks, Opius. See, See you later. later. Thank you. See you soon. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. Great game uh, there by both these teams. Just uh, one of the best matches I've seen, actually, uh, this this season so far. So uh, well job by both teams. It was very, you know, even though it was a domination uh, on the side of Durton's couch, it was not like they you call it a domination when you put it up on the scoreboard. But I mean, overall, it was really like a very close match, you know, so yeah. it was it, very well done by both teams. It was very competitive. Cat Daddy sh should not feel totally bad at this. They just need to make a couple of adjustments, and they c I could see them being really dominant in this division. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if they're not, I, you said the score, or you, you said what their uh, ranking was. What was 
they were. What was their rating? I think they so were far? middle of the pack, somewhere around middle of the pack. I think they could get higher. I feel like they just need slight little adjustments, and they would be good. Yeah, and uh, like extremely good. They're already good. I think they would come become an elite level team if they just make some small adjustments. So Definitely. keep your head up, keep going. Definitely. Well, good games. Any last words, Opius? Um, roll Tide. Roll Tide. All right. Well, everybody enjoy the rest of the Bills and uh, Jets games, and we will see you again next week. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You tell them I'm coming, and hell's coming with me, you hear?